In our scripture text today, James tells us to stop showing favoritism in the assembly, treating the rich visitor with more honor than the poor one. Jesus himself seems to show partiality in his first response to the Syrophoenician woman in today's gospel. Was he testing her faith and saying Gentiles don't deserve the goods meant for God's children? Or was he speaking out of his human worldview, but transcended those limits when she took them, him by surprise with her reply? Either way, the story tells us that God shows no partiality. Everyone who brings a need to Jesus is received with equal honor as a child and heir. We are called here this morning to learn of Christ's healing love. <clears throat> Help us, O oh Lord, to learn your lessons of <clears throat> compassion. Every day there are many ways in which we can offer help to others. <clears throat> help us, O oh Lord, to be ready to reach out to all in need. Come, let us worship the one who prepares us for service. <clears throat> let us sing our songs of praise to the one who has healed us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are captive to sin and, and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the, For the sake, sake of, of your, your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, us and lead us, us, so that, that we may delight in your will and walk, walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day. Gracious, Gracious God, God throughout, throughout the, the ages, ages you transform, transform sickness, sickness into, into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. There's no first lesson today. <clears throat> Psalm 146. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. 
Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Our lesson comes from James 2, 1 through 10, 14 through 17. Faithful Christians do not show partiality to the rich and powerful of the world, especially at the expense of the poor and weak. Likewise, faith does not pay mere lip service to God's will. Instead, a living Christian faith expresses itself in acts of compassion and mercy for those in need. Starting with verse 1. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom, and that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the the excellent name that was invoked over you. You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, If you say you have faith but do not have works, can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. <clears throat> Glory to you, O Lord. In Mark's Gospel, encounters with women usually signify turning points in Jesus' ministry. Here, a conversation with the Syrophoenician woman marks the beginning of his mission to the Gentiles. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephtatha, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated and invite children to come forward for a children's sermon.
Well, good morning. How's everybody today? Good. Are you ready for another year of Sunday school to start? Yep. So do you know how we collect the offering during church? Some of you have maybe even helped with it. The ushers pass the offering plates, and then the people put their money in, and the plates are brought up to, the, up to put on the altar. And what do we do with the offering? Well, we use it to pay the church's bills and to keep the church going and to help spread the news of Jesus. Well, we're going to start something new today, a jingle offering for the kids. So we've got a metal can here. It's just a plain can. But you can help decorate it later. So that during the offering, the can will be here, and you can come up and throw your coins in there and make some noise. Like that. You can even jiggle it around if you want to. So we'll do this today and every Sunday. So what are we going to do with the money? Well, your kids will decide where the money goes. Maybe I'll decide to give it to a family in need. Maybe I'll decide to use it to buy animals for people in other parts of the world. Maybe I'll decide to give it to the food shelves. <clears throat> It'll be fun to watch the money add up. Then after church today, we're going to work on service projects. We're going to work on things that will help other people, just like the offering does. Some of you have helped with these projects in the past, like rolling bandages, packing military boxes, and coloring pictures to send to others. So there are projects for you to help with today. It's one way we can share God's love with others, just like the offering will do. Let's pray. Repeat after me, kids and adults. <clears throat> Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us to help others. Amen. Thank you for coming up. You can go back to your seats, and I'll see you up here for the noisy off jingle offering. In today's gospel, Jesus is traveling along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea near Tyre, a good distance north and west of Jerusalem, well out of Jewish territory. We heard that Jesus enters a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Well, even though he doesn't want anyone to know he's there, people find out. When he sees their needs, he responds. A woman falls on her knees at his feet and begs him to heal her daughter who is possessed with an unclean spirit. At first, Jesus seems reluctant to honor her wish, but she persists and asks again. Jesus responds by healing her daughter. <clears throat> Can you identify with Jesus? Maybe you've had a day like his. It's been a long day at work. You're hungry after having to work through your lunch break. Home looks quiet and inviting, a chance to hide away from it all for a few hours and recharge. But as you get out of your car, the neighbor approaches you with a very concerned expression. We too, like Jesus, experience those times when we just want to make our way into the house without anyone knowing we are there. Yet the life of faithfulness doesn't allow us to build walls and protect ourselves from the needs of our neighbors. We don't know why Jesus wants to be alone in the house. We don't know why Jesus at first rejects the mother's cry for help. What we do know is this, when the woman returns to her home, she finds her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Jesus hears her plea, is moved by her pain, and offers the gift of healing. Like Jesus, if we keep our eyes open, also become aware of the hurting people who fill our lives. Some of them are nearby and familiar, family, friends, co-workers, classmates, fellow church members. Others seem farther away and unknown, hungry people, homeless people. We may not understand them, yet all our neighbors, and even when we, like Jesus, might prefer not to engage, our faith does not allow us this luxury. <clears throat> 
We are, as Jesus insists, to love our neighbors as ourselves. We are sent into God's world as a reflection of Christ. In short, we are called to be servants of the servant, living our lives in the shape of our Lord's holy cross. Our world may attempt to make us believe that acting in our own best interests is the way to live. Today, Jesus invites us into a deeper, richer, more faithful life. Welcomed into God's love just as we are, may we enter into God's world as a reflection of Christ, ready and willing to offer to others the same gifts we have received from God. As we heard in the second lesson from James, loving Jesus requires loving our neighbors. James insists that faith needs to be active. If you're a follower of Jesus, you are called to love and serve the neighbor. Perhaps the most offensive part of James is verse 17, the most familiar line. It's the last few words of today's reading. The verse is, so faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. Lutherans have been uncomfortable with James for a long time, thanks to this verse. We're pretty attached to the principle that we are saved by grace alone through faith alone, not by anything we do. And it's true. God's love for us always comes first. We love because God first loved us. God doesn't love us because we do good enough. James challenges us, though, by calling us to have a living faith. We are saved by God's grace alone, but that grace forces us to do good works. Because God first loved us, we love. We love God, we love our neighbors. You can't love God without loving your neighbor. James dares to say being a Christian means we have to change our attitudes. Being a Christian means we have to change the way we live. What's really annoying about James is that he doesn't say something vague about Jesus loving nice people. He's much more specific. He says Jesus loves you, and that means you need to care for your neighbors. James says we need to have more than a nice Christian attitude where we say, go in peace, feel better, stay warm, eat your fill. Telling someone who's hungry to go eat doesn't do any good. Instead, James tells us we need to give the hungry people food. When someone needs clothes, we need to give them some. You and I are supposed to actually do something about the needs of our neighbors. Imagine that. James wants the church, and by the church he means you and I, Christians assembled as Christ's body. James wants the church to live up to its calling. The church is supposed to be something unique in our world. We are supposed to be God's embassy in a sinful world, the one place where everyone is welcomed and included. We are supposed to be the ones caring for neighbors, just like not just the neighbors we like or who agree with us, but all our neighbors. We are supposed to be the ones seeing and treating everyone as beloved children of God, both sinner and saint. Through the church, God calls every person to repent, to reorient their lives toward God, to follow in Jesus' footsteps. In the church, the human ways we divide and judge and fight and separate each other don't apply. This, This isn't an oasis for people in need to come and receive hope and help, a place for all of us to practice praising God like we'll be doing for all of eternity. The church is a window to the kingdom of heaven. Well, at least that's the idea. That's what the church ought to be. But that's not quite the reality, is it? The problem with the church is it's made up of sinful people like you and me, and so at least in this world, it never fully lives up to its potential. We bring our judgments and stereotypes with us. We bring our selfishness and greed, our desire to have it our own way, our unwillingness to put others first. It's so easy for us to put ourselves first instead of doing our job as the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. James challenges us by calling us to have a living faith, a faith that does something, like when we work on service projects after church today. 
We are saved by God's grace alone, and that grace always sends us out to love our neighbors. You can't love God without loving your neighbor. When God's word does what it's supposed to do, we lose the option of ignoring our neighbors. When you understand God's love, you have to care about your neighbors who are starving or lonely or can't afford food or rent or health care. Jesus says living faith requires us to care about people in this world, those who don't have enough to eat, those who don't have a decent home. James says, if you understand what God has done for you, if you grasp the mercy God has shown you, then you owe it to others to show them mercy also. When we are forgiven for the sins we've committed, whether there's something big or something little, when we receive God's mercy, we ought to share that same kind of mercy with the people around us. When you pay attention to God's word, it does something to you. The Bible teaches you about Jesus, and when you learn about Jesus, when you put your faith in Jesus, he makes you care about the world around you. The Holy Spirit gives you a living faith, and when you have a living faith, you can't help serving your neighbors. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day is, Take My Life That I May Be. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We thank you for this faith community and the many ways you, your work through Jesus Christ brings us healing, freedom, and renewal. Bless all who worship here that we may be for each other and the world signs of your justice and peace. Hear us, O oh God. <clears throat> your mercy is great. Protect your creation and teach us to cherish it. Thank you for the ways they sustain us and for our place among them to tend and watch over what you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Inspire leaders of cities, nations, and tribes to lead with wisdom and humility. Bring, bring peace among peoples in conflict especially in Ukraine and the Middle East, and strengthen global commitments to nonviolent solutions. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. 
Instill in us temperance and self-restraint in our words and actions, fostering a climate of respect and civility in political and social arenas during this election season. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for safety for all students as they attend school. We pray for wisdom and learning for Nel Nagema and Nolubo Sithole, students in South Africa as they attend school. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Keep watch over our community and all in any need, all who suffer with illness of body or mind, grief, loneliness, hunger, or despair. Today we pray especially for Bob Running, Ken Kittleson, Dave Hastings, Myrna Keel, those undergoing and recovering from surgery and medical tests and procedures, and those we now name in our hearts. Be close to the hearts of the lonely and comfort those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all, we pray for those who have no one else to pray for them. May they sense your light, love, and grace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for all who have died and now find their rest in you. May their faithful witness guide us in our daily life with you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We entrust these in all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The ushers will receive the morning offering, and while doing so, the kids can come up with their change and put it in the can. <clears throat> Let's hear some noise. <clears throat> Holy God, giver of all good things, receive the gifts we bring, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, that they may be used to your purposes for life and love in the world. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A few instructions before communion. Please use hand sanitizer as you come up for communion. Uh, change the ushers will no longer be spraying hand sanitizer in your hands, but there's a, the pump bottle and a spray bottle are available for you to use. We will be kneeling at the railing this morning. Please hold out your hand to receive the bread so we know who to serve. Children who do not commune may come forward for a blessing. Gluten-free wafers are available. Please indicate to me that you would like a gluten-free wafer and a deacon will give you one. There's apple juice available in the center of the tray. Come to the banquet for all is now ready.
Let us pray. Holy Jesus, in this meal you have fed us to work in your beloved world. Send us now, filled with yourself and strengthened by your spirit, to live in love for others. Amen. Amen. Be rich in faith and serve one another in all joy and humility. And may the power of God our creator, Christ our salvation, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is, O Christ, your heart compassionate. Well, we're now going to do a blessing of hands since we're going to work on service projects. So everyone hold out your hand. Holy God, source of all goodness, draw your church together. We are called by the Holy Spirit to serve and love one another. As children of God, we have been marked by the sign of the cross of Christ forever. We are claimed, gathered, and sent for the sake of the world. Lord, we ask for your blessings upon our hands, hands that will be about your work. Hands which will spread love and compassion in your world. Amen. Amen. As we live in community with God and one another, may our hands be instruments of peace and love. For those who are in need of warmth and food, may our hands prepare quilts and a banquet. When a stranger is in our midst, may our hands extend a welcome. For the teaching and instruction of all people, May our hands be in the word of God. When injustice is in the world and in our communities, may our hands write letters and peacefully join others. In times of sorrow, sickness, and great suffering, may our hands embrace the broken and offer prayers. God, may we be reminded whatever the need, large or small, you are at work in our hands. May we serve generously, lovingly, and faithfully. Amen. Go in peace. You are God's hands at work in the world. Thanks be to God. Thank you for coming today. We'll go outside for the balloon release after a people, and then you have a cup of coffee and go work on projects. Have a good week.